Okay, I really don't know how I'm going to format this, but this is important stuff. Um, this is not going to be a news video, though I don't think, because my understanding of what this is, is that this is going to be a fairly regular thing, or at least a recurring thing, with a repeating format. That being, well, it's got a name, first of all, Go Ship Games Below Decks. Um, or Below Decks at Go Ship, I suppose, will be also the name of the series. I need to find a way... Uh, name of the YouTube series. I need to find a way to format it in a way that's not just completely stealing this, because obviously this would be the basis for the thumbnail. <laughs> I need to figure out what else I'm going to put in there. But basically, what this is is the result of a new edition at Go Ship, um, GSG Aaron, um, who I believe is American. So that's new blood in a lot of ways for Go Ship, um, and his focus is actually going to be on doing stuff like this, maybe even specifically just this. <laughs> Although, the way he explained it on the dev stream that I watched, tuned into recently on last Friday um, was that his job is going to be revolving around the Steam posts entirely, and basically all of them. Although, this is the fruits of his labours, the biggest thing that's come out of his presence at Ghost Ship. Um, and they acknowledge what this one is. It's a silly one, um, deliberately, um, but that's not... That's not a defining the future of what these posts will be so what am i going to do with it well i could just read it out and i think i will I, I feel like i'm in a position to do that um i'll elaborate where necessary um this is more so going to be an introduction for myself and everyone else to this new series of steam posts and it's really exciting to me because we'll get into it but there'll be more like bigger stuff that this type of steam post will cover in the future um, but for now, I'm just going to go through it and see what we make of it as it is. Hello, Miners. We're trying this Below Deck series as a way to share more moments from the studio and give a look into what's under development. In the future, you can expect some bigger stuff and proper sneak peeks, but we'll start with something light for this one. Hope you like it. And that's from GSG Aaron, whose job title is Content Writer, um, which is just going to be... We're going to be keeping an eye on him. He's going to be very... Um, conducive, I imagine, to content, <laughs> no doubt. Um, I have no uh, inhibition about admitting that. This is going to be very useful for us. Um, so this is pretty much all about this sausage bucket hat, though. Um, the Rogue Wiggler, as it were. It's a Tuesday afternoon in August, and Harper's focus for the day is troubleshooting the upcoming sausage hat. The sausages are simply too wiggly. Harper... I don't want to mispronounce her name. Um, Harper, 3D artist at Ghost Ship Games, is making a new hat for the dwarves. You might not call it a hat by any conventional definition, but the dwarves will be using it as such. It's a metal bucket with a leather chin strap and a big bouquet of sausages flopping out the top. But making the perfect wiggly sausage hat is easier said than done. Right now, the sausages are very stiff. They used to be a lot more floppy, she explains. She's fine-tuning the hat's physics setup using the Unreal Engine. She punches in some numbers in the model's properties, and the sausage links go limp. Drooping down over the rim of the bucket, she resets the physics, then tests the individual sausages to see how they behave. Each one jumps when she clicks it, responding with a playful little bounce, but one sausage starts misbehaving. These ones are wiggling fine, but this one's wiggling on its own. It was wiggling normally before, which is concerning, she says. Christian, Christian a senior, te senior technical artist, rolls his chair over to her desk to help troubleshoot the road wiggler. In Maya, um, they adjust the sausage's properties for dampening and stiffness. Uh, but this only makes the rebellious sausage, sausage even more wiggly. I'm getting hungry just looking at this, Christian says. I'm not. I hate sausages, Harper says. She used to work at a gas station back in Iceland. I had to do 12-hour shifts there. And every day I would come home smelling like hot dogs. It's, my, it's like my past is haunting me through this hat. And here we have some images of, I guess, what they were doing in the sausage bucket hat as shown has, as shown its final form, in its final form, I think, is intended. With its bones showing and with physical and with physics colliders visible. Um, I guess these are the bones, quote, and the physics colliders here. Um, coding the right amount of wiggle. Everybody knows you don't want your wiggly sausage hat to be too wiggly, but where's the sweet spot? When it comes to silly hats, Harper's approach is to make things as jiggly as possible without causing problems. Wiggly elements shouldn't clip through the dwarves' beards and armor, nor should they completely freak out and defy physics in certain situations. To ensure that Deep Rock Galactic's wiggly hats behave normally, each hat goes through a rigorous testing regime. 
On a second monitor, Harper runs prototype sausage hat through these trials, testing every situation it will meet once it's in the dwarf's hands. She cycles through all the armor models to make sure there aren't any stray sausages causing clipping issues. Then she cycles the test dwarf through different animations, dancing, getting down, reviving, pressing a button, shouting, rock and stone, and notes how the sausages respond. Somehow, the rogue sausage from earlier has fallen back in line. Structurally speaking, this isn't a very complex hat, but the wiggly sausages make it a bit of a rascal. Programming the physics makes this hat a little finicky. No hats are like this, Harper says. Each new hat crosses at least five different desks at Go Chip Games, ping-ponging around between artists, art directors, QA testers and the founders. All told, Harper estimates this sausage hat represents about 12 to 15 hours of work. Right. On the left is our muse, on the right are two slappable wiggly palm trees from the Space Beach Party. Just sort of mood board elements to sort of, um, exp not explain, but, I don't know, mood board elements. I think that's a good way of putting it. What's so funny about a jiggly sausage? Deep Rock Galactic certainly isn't the first game with wiggly hats, but we do our best to contribute to this proud tradition. As Harper sees it, these jiggly elements are fun because they look a bit broken, but in a purposeful way. It's hard to be serious when you're wearing a floppy hat. She pulls up an image of a wacky waving arm inflatable tube guy, the type known to flap about in front of auto dealerships. This is like the funniest thing ever. It's peak comedy, she says. Generally speaking, Deep Rock Galactic is at its wiggliest during seasonal in-game events, when the space rig gets special decorations and the dwarves get new hats. Among all the wiggly items in DRG, Harper gives special historical importance to the inflatable palm tree, introduced to the space rig during the summer 2022 space beach party. When designing that tree, she recalls a eureka moment in a conversation with lead artist Yasek, Yasek that has since inspired the crew's approach to wiggly bits. He saw the model for the palm tree and was like, cool, but can you snap it? After that, everything's been a lot more jiggly and snappable. Great, great words. <laughs> the jiggly sausage bucket hat will be available during this year's October 1st, 2023 celebration aboard the Space Rig. The party kicks off this Thursday, September 14th at 1300 um, Central Eastern Time, I believe that is. Rock and Stone, with love, the Ghost Ship crew. So that's the entire transcript, and I'll do that from now on for all of these. But basically, um, this represents this does actually represent a turning point in Ghost Ship's communication. Uh, this new guy, Aaron, he's completely dedicated to making, I guess, as much of this as possible. And obviously, they talked about how it's going to include bigger stuff um, down the line, hopefully quite soon. I'm not sure if the word soon was um, used. Yeah, in the future. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm sort of expecting season five at least this year so hopefully um some information about that will be revealed soon and this seems like a really conducive way to do that without necessarily forcing out a roadmap that they don't even inherently believe in i and i so i really do think this is a turning point of sorts as to the actual subject matter of this one specifically um it does sort of go into a lot of detail about these hats i would say um they, they kind of just treat it with very little seriousness in the sense that they're kind of just there these silly hats are kind of just a fact of life for them i think for these events and i think that's okay um obviously they mentioned how it takes about 12 to 15 hours to make one but i don't think that's too bad in, in the sense i don't think that's too long to spend on this instead of other things um in, i'm still of the opinion that these cosmetics don't have to be silly um but that's the choice they've made, and it seems like they're going to stick with it. Um, either way, it's actually really cool to get some insights into how these kind of things work, and that's what this is going to continue to be. Um, we will talk about this concept, I would imagine, more than the actual subject matter itself on the podcast this week. It will not go amiss, because this is really significant stuff. Um, so I hope people are interested. I hope um, I did a good job at sort of just reading it out and explaining it a little bit. Um, I will continue to do so as well. Um, and on that note, um, thank you for watching. If you have been watching, um, if you did enjoy, please make sure to leave like, possibly subscribe. And if you want to stay up to, de up to date with all Deep Rock Galactic related news, patches and behind the scenes posts, as we have now, um, then feel free to hit the notification bell as well. I mean, I'm not going to make you, but... If you're interested in that stuff, it would help you. So feel free. Um, and on that final note, um, I'll see you at some point very soon, I imagine. Um, that's all for today. Thank you once again and take care.